find help for you from the threshing floor or from the wine press. Are we today? Verse 26 says, 28 says, Then the king said to her, What is troubling you? And she answered, This woman said to me, Give your son that we may eat him today and that we will eat my son tomorrow. I'm reading the Bible. I know you may be scary this one. Verse 29 says, So we boiled my son and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, Give your son that we may eat him. But she has hidden her son. Verse 30 says, Now it happened. When the king heard the words of the woman, that he tore his clothes. Meaning the king is realizing now this situation is worse than yeah. what I was thinking. They are in great family, but it has gone to the point of even of eating each other's children. Now it happened when the king heard the words of the woman, that he tore his clothes, and as he, he was, and, and as he passed by on the wall, the people looked and underneath he had sackcloth on his body. Sackcloth to represent that this morning because of the siege of the city of Senea. Now the, 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 the entire nation didn't know that the king is mourning because in those days when you put sackcloth it means you are in mourning or you are in fasting or you are trusting God for deliverance as the sackcloth underneath. But when he heard these words they were so disturbing that he tear out his clothes. And then the people realized the king had sackcloth underneath him because he was mourning. I'm interested in verse uh, 25 and 26 and 27. And what we are sharing here today is about divine help. Divine help. Divine help. Amen. Amen. And if we are that church where we repeat after the priest, I will ask you to repeat divine help. Divine, divine help. help. Divine help. Divine help. Divine divine help. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So verse 25 says, And there was a great famine in Samaria. Now the reason of Samaria there is that Samaria was the capital city of the kingdom of Israel by this time. Because after the death of Solomon and his son has taken over, and the son uh, he, 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 he was so cruel that the people were so under a, a, a heavy cruelty that they, the kingdom ended up splitting. They rebelled against the king in, in, in Jerusalem, and then they went to the north. So now the nation of Israel at this stage is now split into two. We have the northern part called Israel, and the southern part called Judah. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Now, the capital city in the northern part of that kingdom is called now Samaria. And the southern and the capital city in the south is called Jerusalem, because we have now two kingdoms. That's why when you read your Bible sometimes, it says the king of Judah, and another stage again, it says the king of Israel. It's because there was a stage where there was a split of the kingdom. Are we together? So here now is the northern kingdom that is under siege and the, the king of, of Syria has come and, and blockade the entire city and they, now there is a great famine in that city where even the worst scenario of people eating each other's kids came about. Now, in verse 26 it says that as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall. A woman, let's talk about the wall. In the olden days, every city in the ancient times, cities had a hole around them for protection. And there is now a gate through which there is access to enter and to come out of the city. Even commercial activities happening at the gate, or dispute resolution happening at the gate, but the gate, uh, the city itself is wall around. And now some of the wall, like even in this scripture, some of the wall were so broad and wide that even the chariots can go on top of the wall. I'm explaining this so that you can imagine. 
Now, the people are in the city, and now the king is on the wall, passing. Because on the whole day, even the military are there to check if there is any danger coming against the city, so that they can be able to prevent. Now, the, the, the king is passing on the wall, and the city is under siege. Are we together? And as he was passing by, now a woman is crying out to the king and say, Help my lord, O king. She is appealing to the highest authority in the land, which is the king. I say, Help my lord, O king. Verse 27, the king answers. That's the main scripture for today. He says, And he said, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? Now, this response, when you look at it closely, is not that the king is trying to be ugly to the woman. The king, because of the pressure, the great famine that they are in, now is asking if the Lord, that's the situation that you are in, the situation that you are, if the Lord does not help you. Where can I find help for you? That's the king. From the flushing floor or from the white press. If the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? In other words, he say is implying that the situation that you are in, only God can help you. As the king, I cannot help you. Because even from the threshing floor, the place where we get food, where when we have harvest, we take our corns there so that it may be separated from the chaff, and we have the corns there, and from the wine press where we can get juice and wine from, even those places, even my own, are dry up. Now, if the Lord does not help you, the only one who is capable of helping does not help you, where will I find the help? you. That's the response of the king to the woman. Have you been in a situation where even the government can't help you? Have you been in a situation even if you appeal to your uncle is a millionaire, but in your case, the millions of your uncle cannot resolve? Have you been in a situation where uh, the people you look up to for help, you cry out for help, but they cannot help you? Now you are left only with one option, God. And if God does not help you, you are finished. The way they say it in Nigeria, it means I am finished. Because God is my only option that I am. Are we together? Amen. So at one point or another, in the life of believers, if you have not reached there, there will be a point where you reach there. Where you are in a situation that the only option you will have is from God. The only help you can get is from God. Where you will try any other things, you will have connections, and all of a sudden your connections are no longer connected. You read, you call this one, they can't help. You try this one, they can't help. You appeal to your father, they can't help. Now you are stuck. Now if God in that situation does not help you, then you are finished. That's why we are titling this divine there is always a time now when you need to appeal to God for his help. It means my wisdom, I have reached that end. My, 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 my qualification cannot help. I have the money, but the situation that I'm in, money cannot resolve. So I have now to turn where? To God for help. And when you turn now to God for help, it means you are appealing for his divine assistance. For him to come and help. And if God does not help you, then there is no help from anywhere else. Amen. Amen. So that word 27, it says, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help from you? In other words, the help that you need, it's only going to come from the Lord. Even I, the king, I cannot be able to help you. You can only get it from the Lord. So there, there are times, as I said, where the help that you need can only come from the Lord. And there is a scripture in Psalms uh, 121 verse 1 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills 
From whence come my help? My help, verse 2, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Divine help, it means you are appealing to God for his assistance. That the things you have tried in your own ability, I have not worked out. And the only option now you are left with is God. And if God does not answer, then you are at the dead end. When you are reaching that situation, you will see many in the Bible, people now will start even wailing and crying because the only option that you are having by that time is God. And if God does not intervene, then there is no help from anywhere else. So today, as we start even on this teaching carrying on uh, in the month, is that there is a time where you have tried everything else and they have not worked. When you have reached that moment, it is a time to appeal for divine help. It's not time to sit back and relax. But it's a time now to invoke God as a child of covenant and say, I need your help on this matter. And if God, you do not attend to me, then I am dead. Then I am finished. Are we together? It means you are not a lazy person. You have tried this, nothing has worked. You have put a proposal, they are rejected. You, you are hurt. You put again a proposal, they are rejected. You are hurt. You put again. You have tried all you can. You have appealed. You are, your presentation was the best, but nothing has worked out. Now it builds in your knowledge and your wisdom. You have tried everything else that you can do. And you are not a lazy person. But you have reached a point where you are saying now, God, if I do not see your help in this matter, then this business is closed. If I do not see your help in this matter, then this business comes to an end. Are we together? And there is a time in the past, I'm remembering here now, a house, people have paid a house for like 15 years. Now they have been defaulting <coughs> after 15 years. And the bank now ready to repossess. They have called everywhere for help. They were no help. And the next week, their house now has to be auctioned. And there is no help. Now an old man shedding tears. Tears coming out. It means it's a painful situation. In that case, now we turn where? To God. We are appealing to God for help to come and intervene. Until God intervened two days before the auction and there was a provision. The house was rescued. It means he, had, he did try everything in his own ability and they were not waking out. Now he has to turn where? To God. And appeal. And God is there to help his people. Are we together? We are living in a time where because of too much information and knowledge, we are we can try everything that will not work. We say, no, maybe this is not for me. Let me move it somewhere else. No, but there is the other option of appealing to God for divine help. Where God now comes and intervenes in the matter. Are we together? So the scripture says, if the Lord does not help you, where can I find help for you? Where? From the wine, from the threshing floor, or from the wine press? Remember, they are under siege. There is no provision. All the supply are cut. And now it's reached a level where now they have even to sell the head of a donkey. Maybe they talk about that. In those days, in the Jewish culture, a, a donkey was an unclean animal, so you can't eat a donkey. Now, when people reach a level of eating a donkey, it means they have reached the dead end, when they have to eat now a donkey. Not even a donkey. Now, they are selling the, the worst part of a donkey, which is the head. They have to sell it for 80 shekels of silver. That expensive. It. it means the situation now is worse. It reached a level when the dove is passed. The dove, that when it falls down, whoever gets it will go and sell it for four seven. So it reached that point. And it's even the king now, when he realized the, ex the extent of the situation, where now even people have started eating their own children because of the intensity, the extreme starvation in that place. The king now is saying, if the Lord does not help you, where will I find help for you? So today I'm here to encourage you 
When you reach a dead end in every situation, mm. there is the option of appealing to God mm. for help. Mm. There is an option of crying out to God and saying, mm. Lord, I need your assistance in this matter. Amen. And if the Lord does not come through for you, then there is no help from anywhere else. And see that your faith is in them. That's why you see when people become emotional because you're emotional. Even the crying become them. The tears are falling down. What? You are appealing for God's help. And if God does not come through for you, there is no help from anywhere else. Wow. That's the point where now we are appealing for divine help. In other words, you are turning to God and say, You are the only option. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where will my help come from? Mm. And he answered himself, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. In other words, he's turning to God and say, You are my only help. And if you do not help me, there is no help from anywhere else. And through prophet Isaiah, God says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. It means God's help is always available for his children. God's help is always available for his children when we are petitioning God for his assistance. Are we together? God's help is always available. When you have tried things have not worked, it's not the end for you. There is a last option, if I can call it like that, to appeal for God's when other people, they can abandon, they can say, no, let's leave this. They do not have the knowledge that there is another aspect of God where now he comes and shows up and intervene in your mind. That's what we are talking about. When God now comes and help the life of a person. So 26 says, the king was passing on the wall. The woman is crying out, help my Lord, O oh King. She is not asking the soldier. She is not asking the woman. She is appealing to the highest authority in the land. And if the highest authority in the land cannot help you, where will you get help from? That's why even the king now he says, if the Lord does not help you, where will I find help from you? For you. Or from the threshing floor, because threshing floor that way we can have supply in terms of food. Even that place is dry. Where you can have what to drink in terms of juice and wine from the wine press, there is none. So where will the help come? And there is a great famine. The city is under siege. We do not have help. There is no supply. So if God, Jehovah, does not help you, I, the king, where will I find help? How we to get? So we don't appeal to men. You may appeal to men for help. And when it's come to this level yet, it means you have tried everything, nothing has worked. I have used, and I have called my brother in Turban, he has not helped. Mm -hmm. I call somebody overseas, they cannot help. Now I am stuck. If God does not come out, I am out of the house. If God does not assist me, they are kicking me out. When I am in that position, I do not need to sit back. It is now time to start invoking God. And say, as a child of covenant, I am appealing to you for your divine assistance. I am calling for help from above. I am appealing to you by prayer. I am appealing to you by fasting. I am appealing to you by serving. I am appealing for help. Lord, help. In this situation, because there is no help from anywhere else. And when you are in this situation, if your brother can help you, go to your brother. But there is a time when the brother can't help, mm -hmm. the husband can't help, the employer can't help, the government can't help. The only option you are left with is God. And if God does not come through for you, then you are dead. Mm. When you are in that tight corner, mm. there is an option for us as a believer now to appeal to God's help. That when our things start happening, and when you are appealing to God's help, it doesn't matter how the answer will come. That's God's business. You, you are appealing. Because if you are known, you will not have gone to God. You have gone and resolved it yourself. But when you reach a level where you don't know what else to do, 
As I am saying, it's not that you are lazy. You have tried everything else in your human wisdom and ability and nothing has worked. Please remember, there is the option of appealing to God for help. Mm. And say, I am appealing for help, Lord. Times are hard. Things are not working. Mm. I have tried from the beginning of the year mm. and now I am reaching September. I do not want to cross the year mm. in the same way I entered it. Mm. Now I am appealing for help. May the Lord intervene that there may be a turnaround. May the Lord intervene that my situation change. May the Lord intervene that I may see my family established. May the Lord intervene that I may see my marriage coming to pass. Lord, I am at that age where I need the companion. And it's not an ungodly feeling. Are we together? It's not an ungodly feeling, especially for women because you keep it. It's not an ungodly feeling of desiring a companion. But if it has not happened, there is a way of appealing to God. Mm, mm. I am appealing to God that you may intervene in this matter. Mm. I have tried on my own. Nothing has worked. So I am calling for help in the name of Jesus. So that the things, even when we TV here, sometimes we talk about family pattern, where the grandfather has not made it, the father has not made it, now it is on you. And the tendency of the previous generation are also happening to you, though you are born again. Mm. You don't need to see. You have to appeal to God and say, as a child of covenant, as of what is written in the word of God, this pattern is against the word of God. So I reject, I am appealing for help. Let this pattern break. As of me and my children, things have to move according to the word of God. You don't sit and relax. You appeal to God for help. God's help, as he said, I will help you. Have you asked for God's help? Mm. Have you told God now, on my own, I have not, I cannot do anything. I have tried it, nothing has have worked. Times are hard, but the only option I have is you. That way now God steps in. Mm. 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 Are we together? God now steps in. And the Bible says, when the righteous cry out, the Lord hears. Yes. And come and deliver them out of their trouble. Mm. So when you are in the tight corner, it's a time to cry out to I God. Know, yeah. It's a time to appeal to God. Mm. That was sometimes you close yourself even in the room. You are not coming up. No, I am not coming out of this room until this matter is resolved. Mm. Mm. Are we together? Yes. There is a pastor friend of ours. They were tormented by one of the person in the family in terms of witchcraft for years until it reached a level that even start affecting the church because of the witchcraft. They took one day, they take the Bible and what they say we are going to church. The day we come out of church is only when we hear this matter has been concluded. We are not coming out of church. They were sleeping in church. Prayer, reading the word. Prayer, reading. At church, they are not going home. They are staying in church until the matter is resolved. What are they doing? They are pleading for divine help. Until God intervened and the person not repenting, just confessing, it's me who killed this one. That one was killed by me. This one was killed by me. This, this, I was not working. This business is not working because of what I did. This one is not working. It's because of that I did. But the prayer of these two are the one now stopping my work from continuing. And the person dies. Now they are calling them three days later in church, or four days later in church, that your uncle has died. That when they take their bottle and the Bible, now out of the church. God has answered to their help. Did they kill their uncle? No. They were appealing for help that the matter that they are going through as frustration as fun has to come to an end. How God will answer is up to him. We are appealing for help. Lord, I need your help. They say in our family nobody gets married, and I have seen it. But as for me, something has to change in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I take my bottle, I take my Bible, I start calling upon the Lord. Yes. The water I am drinking, no food I am staying. Lord, until this matter is resolved, I am not coming down mm. from this mountain. Mm. When it's like that, then the Lord does still not give him God any other option but to come and attend to what you are appealing him for. Mm. So we do have an option of appealing to God for divine help. 
for divine help. And one scripture here, the king uh, of East of Judah, remember we said Israel, now we are king of Judah. He says in verse 7, 2 Chronicles 32, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid nor dismay before the king of Assyria. No, before all the multitude that is with him. For they are more with us than with him. Though there is multitude, he is saying to the people, they are more with us than with him. Mm. How? He gives them the answer. Verse 8. With him is the arm of the flesh. Only what you are seeing there, that's what the king of Assyria has. Mm. But with us, there is what? The Lord our God. God. To do what? To help us and to fight our battles. So there is an, 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 an arsenal that you can appeal to to fight other battles that yourself with your human effort you cannot win. That's when now you are appealing to God. As of me and my house, I will not go through what my aunties are going. If they are continuing to go there, is their problem. But me as the word of God, this is the case. So I am appealing God for divine help. Let there be a change in my life. Let there be a change in my generation. Let there be a change from me going down. The new patterns, according to the word of God, must be established. So, Lord, I am appealing for help. Come through for me in the name of Jesus. Appealing for divine help is when you have reached the end of the road, when all your wisdom can't help, all your finances, they are issues even if you have money, you can't resolve it. There are issues and when you have money, you can't resolve it. And I've given you an example. There is a man uh, in Pumalanga. One day the bishop went to pray for him. When he entered the yard, everything looks like everything is there. The house, the cars outside. I went, then you ask, where is the man I'm coming to see? Come. And they went to show the man is there. He's wealthy. He's got companies. He's got this. He's got that. The only help he needs, he wants to pass you in the normal way. Mm. And now he's stuck in the house. Mm -hmm. He has everything except passing you in the normal way. I need help as I'm carrying this pouch. I can't go. If I go out, I must come back quick. I need help. But all the money the company has, they cannot resolve this. Mm -hmm. What was the solution? Let appeal now for divine help for this matter to be resolved. Because the doctor can't help. Your money can't help. Your, your connection cannot help. You are stuck in the house with everything except this is your condition. Mm -hmm. And then there was now a time to appeal to God by prayer to come and intervene in that matter so that the person now become normal. So as believers, we do have an option to appeal to God for help. Mm -hmm. If the Lord does not help you, where will I find help for you? That's what the king is asking. Mm. It means if even if you, you can be smart, but the smartness it reaches a place where now it can no longer work for your advantage. Mm. What do you do? Do you step down and sit? No. Now you are appealing to God for help. Mm. I am appealing to you to come and assist. I have tried everything. I have put makeup. Mm. I've got a suit. I've got this thing. But I am dying inside, Lord. Need your help. Help. Lord, in this matter, let there be a solution in my life, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And when we are appealing to God for help, mm. if your brother can help you, then let leave God alone. Go to your brother. But when the brother also can't help, the father can't help, the government can't help, the situation is still there, there is a time to, there is a God in heaven readily available to assist his children who cry out to him for help. That's what we call divine help. How would the answer be? You don't know how the answer will be. But God himself will intervene. Mm -hmm. Divine help. Divine help. My wife was telling me a testimony about somebody who was trying to be initiated in, into uh, to be sacrificed as part of a ritual. They arrest the woman. They take her to the bush. They tie her. They close her mouth. Everything is tied. They want to do part of the sacrifice. But one of the guys, they have forgotten something. So he takes the car to go and try to go and collect whatever they have forgotten. The two people were still there guarding. The woman is like, mm, mm, not can't talk because everything is gone. When she's doing that, the lioness is as if 
They are touching his cows. So the lioness, wherever was, is following the sound of that woman. The lioness in the bush, in the bundles. Then is coming. When the lioness appeared, this man, they ran away. Now the woman is where? Bound on the tree. The mouth closed. But the lioness gets close to the woman and she just sits down. Not doing anything to the woman. Until hours later, the rangers of that bush, they come and appear with guns. Then they see, oh, there is a lioness, there is somebody bound. When the lioness saw the rangers, now the lioness just stood and left. And these people come in and untie. What is the story? I was here to be initiated. What was a divine help? Mm. How will God help? You don't know. Even a lioness, they are under the control of us. Go and gather there on behalf of my daughter. Mm. And that was divine help. <laughs> it means I am a dead and I am dying here. God, if you do not come through, mm. I am dead. This is my, my, my burial site. Mm. But God intervened by causing an animal to come and appear. These people ran away. But the animal just like, a hey, true story. And lie there until the rangers came and the situation. Now the lioness stood, left, and they untied up the lady. They asked me what's happening. I was here to be initiated, but you guys have arrested you. I was I chat, stolen, and brought here part of the initiation. But the divine help came from the Lord. There are times when even medically they will try things they do not. They don't succeed. You spend the money. There was scripture we read here. The woman with the issue of blood, spending the money for 12 years, but to the physician, and nothing was resolved. Until now, she's one, let me touch. When it's like that, the multitude are there, but because she had an expectation, it's like appealing for God. Then she made, was made whole. How are we together? We do have option as believers of appealing to God for divine help. When things don't work up and you have tried them, they don't work up. Don't just sit. Appeal to God for help. Stay out. It's a take. Even just take water and the word of God. Read the Bible. Pray. Listen to worship. Read the Bible. And you are saying to God, I am here for help. You know I am trying one. I have tried to. I have gone here. I have gone there. And I've been like this for three years. Nothing has worked out. It's not that I am lazy. The wisdom you gave me, I apply everywhere. Nothing has worked. So I don't just to sit and say these things have not worked out. I am now coming to you to appeal for divine help. Mm. It means you are telling God you have reached a dead end. And if you, Jehovah, my father, you do not come through, then I am dead. When you have reached that level, is an option now to appeal for divine help. <coughs> divine help is when you have been in a situation for far too long in the same way. Things are not moving. You try this, are not moving. You feel stagnant. Even another time, you feel backward. When you look at your life now, this is 10 years, it's like you have gone back. If there have not been progress. Lord, what is going on? I try this. I apply there. I try that. I go here. I equip myself. Nothing works. Lord, I need your help. When you have reached that level, appeal for divine help. Don't just sit back and relax and say, things happen, things just happen. No. There is a way of invoking God for us to come and assist you yes. in the matter. There is a way of appealing to God to come and assist. That's what people do crazy things. They sleep on the floor. Lord, I am sleeping on this floor, even fasting my bed. The day I come out of this mountain, my story has to change. Mm. I have tried everything, nothing has worked. So I am here, Lord. I am here by prayer and fasting. I am appealing to you. I am here by, by serving you. I am appealing to you. My heart is in serving you, but nothing is working. So, Lord, I need your help. Mm. Come through for me. And if you do not come, there is no help from anywhere else. You are my only option. Mm. And God also likes those situations to show himself as the mighty man of war we have prayed. So that all praise go back to God. Mm -hmm. So that you know, yes, I have a PhD, but it didn't work out for this one. 
I have the money, but they yes. did not work out for oh. this one. I have the connection, but they were not connected. I have this, but they not help me. Oh. The only option I had was God. Oh. And God, here you have come. So my praise is to you. Like Hannah, that he raised the poor from the dark. He lived the beggar from the harsh He set them among the princes and made them inherit what? The throne of glory. The same people were far. He brought them near. He intervened. That's the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is an option for us of appealing for divine help. Mm. When things look stuck, appeal for divine help. Mm. Lord, I am appealing to you. Yes, My business is not working and for five years it has been the same. This is not a godly pattern. Your words have been fruitful and multiplied, yes. but my business is not multiplying. It's still in the same place and far away even gone back from where I started. What's going on? I am appealing for help for my business. Yes. Come through for my business. Let there be a change. You say through this business, we will expand the kingdom of God, but this business is stagnant for far too long. I have tried this. I have gone to this seminar. I have read rich daily. I have read the poor daily. I have gone for management course. I have done all of these things, but nothing works. I have applied human wisdom to this business. Nothing has helped. So please attend to this matter. I am coming to you now for divine help. Help from above. Then when calls the scripture say, I will look upon the hills. From where can my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So I am appealing to you, the owner of everything. It is a shame to Jehovah God if I can tie what God said these things shall work out. And I do not appeal to God. There is a time of appealing now to God. Mm -hmm. And I say for the sake of your work that integrity is attached to, intervene in this matter. Let there be a change. If I have to get married, as you say, I have to get married. It has to happen in the name of Jesus. And there has to be divine intervention. Because God is not a respecter of person. And when they attend to situation, even things that lose, start, block, all of a sudden they are open. Why? Because God now has been involved into the situation. And I don't know if I'm giving you this story. There's a time when we used to live in job making period. There used to be a woman who had been trusting the Lord for marriage for years and trusting God for marriage. Because God has said to her, shall get married. 40 came, no marriage. 45 came, no marriage. 49 came, no marriage. At 49 and a half, that's when the man now appears. At 50, she gets married. Now there is another complication. She can't bear children. God, your word says this, but there is nothing happening. What are we doing now? Appealing for divine help from God until the menopause has to be suspended for God to intervene. Amen. The woman conceived, God, child, children grow two years, then menopause back. Because God cannot be restricted against what he has said. So a person at 50, when you look up, it's like 642. Everything, you know when a man appears, everything goes, yaka. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so the woman experienced what God says when he appealed for divine help. You did say this, it has not happened. So I am appealing for divine help by prayer, by fasting. By rebelling your way, by being faithful, by obedience, by purity. All of those are rising before God, asking for help. And God intervened. There is a stage in one way or another where you reach a particular area of your life where you don't know what else to do. That option, when you have reached there, is called, there is an option of divine help. Don't sit back and relax and say it was not meant for me. Mm. When God has clearly said, this is also what you're going to enjoy. So you don't sit and relax. You have to appeal now to God for help. It can be by prayer. It can be by fasting. It can be by faithfulness in a particular way. And say, Lord, this is a way of me invoking for your help in this matter. May you come through. I can't sit like this and nothing moves. And I'm fine with it. There is an option of appealing for divine help. So as we go into the month of August, all we are calling for is divine help. 
if there are things you have trusted God for the, from the beginning of the year, when we're doing prayer, lifting up the gate of 2019, now we are entering August, there is nothing that has moved in relation to that. Now we are start appealing God for help. That's what we've been praying. Lord, I need your help. If it's marriage-related matters, we are appealing to God for help. If it's finances-related matters, yes. we are appealing to God for help. Mm. If it's work-related matter, we are appealing to God for help mm. until you experience divine help. Mm. Divine help is when all you have tried in your own ability, nothing has worked, and you don't need to sit like that. Mm. There is an option that we have as children of God now to appeal to God to come and help in the matter, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You don't just don't sit. Are we together? Yes. Just rise up, let us pray. And we'll